The importance of organizations is that they bring together resources to achieve desired goals and outcomes. They produce goods, services more efficiently. They facilitate innovation. They use modern manufacturing and information technologies. They adapt to influence a changing environment, create value for owner, customer, employees, and accommodate ongoing challenges of diversity, ethics, motivation, coordination of employees. Any questions on this slide? Which of these points do you think is the most important part uh, of the organization? What organization? To produce goods and services efficiently, right? If we talk about a supermarket, what is a supermarket thing? As long as they have everything available to you efficiently, which means for a reasonable price, and uh, you can get them easily, you know, that they achieved their objective, right? What happens if you go to a supermarket and they don't have everything? They're not doing it. They're not effective in that manner. And then uh, if you go there and you want stuff and they're very expensive, you know, maybe they're not efficient. They're not able to get their resources you know, uh, cheaply. Are you guys okay with this? Uh, do you want to take another example? You remember the bank? Remember we talked about CAC Bank and we said, you know, if you go to CAC Bank, what do you want them to give you? You know, provide you services and goods efficiently, right? As long as they can do that, they're great. Uh, which of these is not very important as part of the importance of organizations or the least important in your opinion? Any, anyone? Now, some people say facilitating innovation. Do you think companies, they should always come with something new? Or it's okay if they don't come with something new? You know, some companies, they don't come with something new. For example, you go to the supermarket and they don't innovate. They don't come up with new products and new services. And if that happens, what will happen after a while? They will start to become old dated and then the competition will start to be more innovative. And the more innovation their competition brings, the more customers will go to their competition and then they will start to lose. So companies, they should continue to facilitate innovation. And that's the importance of innovation. Because everyday customers, they want better stuff, right? Which one is the best supermarket in town? Al Huda, why? They're big, they always have something new, they have everything available, their location is very good, they keep contact customer service, they always have good products that not expired. They come up with new technologies in terms of their refrigerators, in terms of how they maintain their fruits, how their vegetables are staffed. Their employees are nice. They always, do you see? Uh, let's see, any other? Uh... What does it mean to create value for companies? All right. Uh, do you think companies, they should create value for their employees? What do you think? Should the company provide their employees with good value? Yes. Give them maybe pay them good salary, give them good training, give them reasons to come and work hard, give them a chance to learn new tricks and new... Is that part of the goal and the role of the organization? If an organization doesn't do that, will that make the organization to be less uh, effective, less efficient? People don't like to work there. Do you see? Not only employees, also customers. You see, if the company works hard to make customers happy, then people will come back, right? And the organization will grow. What happens if you don't take care of your customers? Someone else will, right? And uh, the same thing for your owners. Do you want to provide uh, profits for your owners or you don't? You always want to do that. Are you guys okay with this? Yes, uh, point, uh, last point says accommodate ongoing challenges of diversity, ethics, motivation, coordination of employees. So part of the goal of companies and uh, the importance of organizations is to keep up with these challenges. So there is an issue now with diversity. Do we have an issue of diversity in this country? We have a big problem with diversity, right? So all of the people, they start to say, no, you, us, them, you know, uh, south, north, uh, east, west. So do companies have to make sure that they maintain a good balance and keep everyone in the wor workforce in terms of customers and in harmony at least? Do we have a problem in ethics? Do we have an increased amount of corruption? Is corruption a big co problem for this it's environment? It's a big issue, right? So do companies have to deal with this? They have to deal with this. So as companies do, do motivation coordination between employees with their customers and their objectives, uh, you know, it becomes part of their, uh, you know, uh, goal, part of their cause, and companies should focus on that. Okay? How about... Uh, dimensions of an organization design, we have two dimensions. We have the structural dimension and the contextual dimension. 
the structural dimension, we have uh, formalization, specialization, hierarchy of authority, centralization, professionalism, personal uh, ratios. Do you guys know what's, what's what all of these structural? Have any questions on these? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Now, on the other hand, we have the contextual uh, dimension, which is size, organization, uh, technology, innovation, goals, uh, and strategies and culture. Do you guys understand those contextual? Yes or no? No. Great. Uh, if we go through them, uh, formalization, uh, you make everything formal in your company. Uh, anyone have been to a company and have they have seen a job description? Anyone have seen some sort of a stick paper note on the wall of a company that says uh, uh, rule number one, and then there is some rules? That's an example of formalization. They put rules. Number two, specialization, is when you have uh, inside the company, you see department of. Every time you see a department, that's an example of a specialization. Because everyone in this department, let's say department of marketing, all the people there, they work on marketing. Hierarchy of authority, every time you see that you, we have a, a, a C level, remember C level? CEO, CFO, CMO, that's our one hierarchy. And then you have managers, like the general manager for departments. And then you have maybe the subordinate departments. You see, those are examples of hierarchy. You have levels in your organization chart. Centralization is the idea of where the decisions are made. Some companies, they have decisions on the top. Some companies, they have their decisions on the bottom. If the decision on the top, it means that the general manager has always to take the decision. And then employees don't have the authority to take decision. On the other hand, some companies, they have very small centralization, they have more decentralization, and that's when the decision is mainly made on the bottom, and that's when we call decentralization. Professionalism is the amount of people who are specialized, or they have the proper training. For example, if you go to, let's say, a supermarket, maybe you will find some people labor. They don't have any training, they just work. Their job, to take the chicken and put it there on the, do you see? They take the apples and they organize them. Maybe they don't have any special training. But maybe also they have some employees inside who have got to receive big training, say, in accounting principles, so they can do the accounting properly. So that amount of professionalism can also be different from one company to the other. And then the personal ratio is how many people we have in direct and how many people are there indirect. What do we mean by direct and indirect? People who are supporting for the production of the services or products. These are direct, and then the staff people. Do you know what's the staff people? For example, secretaries, assistants, those would be uh, some uh, sub companies. They have a lot of assistants. Some companies, they have a lot of people who are specialized in what they do, and they are part of the direct production of their products and services. Do you understand the structural? Let's take, on the other hand, the contextual dimension. Uh, talks about the size big companies, small companies. Technology, big technology, small technology. A lot of technology, uh, very uh, diverse type of technologies. Some companies, for example, uh, maybe they have an, uh, a UMS system, or let's say that we have an LMS system. Uh, some companies, they have uh, maybe a mobile application. Uh, maybe they will have uh, some uh, software that uh, help uh, the automation of their production. So uh, that type of contextual uh, dimension. Environment, what environment you work in, who you deal with in the environment. If you talk about CAC Bank, what do they deal with? They deal with maybe people, investors, people who have money, people who want transfers, right? So that's the environment they work in. Uh, the environment is very, uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe unstable, maybe it's uh, surprising. Uh, maybe if you work in a company which is, uh, let's say, uh, a manufacturing of uh, soda or drinks or water company. You know, in a water company, uh, they have a will inside the company, they get the water, they make the water, they send it. People buy the water, they drink it. Is it stable? Very stable. Do they know what to expect tomorrow? Maybe yes. Um, goal and strategy, what is their goal? Do they want to expand? Do they want to leverage? Do they want to have the brightest people? Do they want to have the uh, strongest machines? Do they have the most expensive assets? And then culture. Do you guys know what's culture? Culture is a completely other topic. We'll, have, we'll talk more about it later.